big in zombie pop because everything's sorcerer speed and a lot of your permanents are really important. So just getting rid of them. And he doesn't. All right, so he just wants to Restoration Angel. I guess that's a fine play, but... Yeah, now John's got to assume that this is Resto Angel. Yeah. If he has a there's... fourth land, this Restoration Angel could be devastating for Aaron because he'll block the messenger, it'll get a counter, he can like pot away the ghoul to go get Restoration Angel to blink the messenger. So, oh, he's not, he doesn't have the fourth land. I know John would like sandbag the uh, the pod. But so he gets uh, Blood Ocean Blue, which isn't the worst because if anything dies in combat, he's. Aaron's going to be taking a lot of damage. John with a bit of a pump fake there at the attack. Just wants to get as much information as possible. And now, uh, Aaron yeah. definitely gonna play the angel. He there. has to, he's forced to play. Yeah, he, I, mean, he, I think he's trying to decide which creature to block. Or maybe he's thinking about just going straight into a race. I mean, it's not really bad now. He's going to block the ghoul, probably, and then Oblivion Ring. Nope. Hmm. <laughs> Choose to block this messenger. Yeah, after showing that you're tapping out for a Blood Artist, I kind of like just blocking the ghoul and then Oblivion Ringing the messenger. So now John had, uh, I think John has a Tragic Slip in hand, so yeah. he had kind of an interesting choice there. He could have Tragic Slipped the uh, Resto Angel. Oh, uh, no, I guess I no, mean, he still can, yeah. 3-3, three, three. yeah, no. So yep. he's going to Tragic Slip this Resto Angel post-combat. Mm-hmm. Uh, there he gets to uh, drain Aaron for three, two from the Dross Messenger yeah. coming back to play, and one from the Blood Artist, then another one from this Tragic Slip here, and that's a lot of damage. Yeah. He doesn't have a Metamorph in hand, right? I don't think John does. No, I don't think so. Okay, because I thought I saw one, but all right. So untap Vapor Snake will stem some bleeding, especially to get this Restoration Angel in play. Like, he can maybe trade with the Messenger and stop the two damage. Especially, like, bouncing a, a one-drop uh, back to Zombie Pod's hand is actually pretty good, especially since he's choked on mana right now. It might be able to just slow his entire turn down. But Aaron is in a lot of trouble. That is a ton of pressure on the board. All right, so he's going to pay for ma pay the mana to see his hand. And... Mm. All right, so it's a skin render, a pod, and a phantasm one. This does happen sometimes. You you might end up with an image that can't get cast every once in a while. It's a little awkward. Getting stuck on three with so many four drops. And fourth land for Aaron, so, so now still angel mana. And a snapcaster snake, so he could, if he wants to, just bounce a bunch of things and then... All right, so he is now going to Oblivion Ring. Ooh. Yeah, just uh, the plays are a little schizophrenic. Yeah, little I mean, schizophrenic. if he was going to... If you're going to make a line, you got to follow through with yeah, it a lot of the time. Yeah, I agree I mean. with that. All right, so this is going to come in. Now that John has no pressure and he has his opponent tapped out, now he can just... The, this, this final blow of playing a birthing pod. Yeah, this will slowly take control of the game. Now that, yeah, with this online, that is your Planeswalker. I think he's just going to Vapor Snag something just to keep things off the board. I don't think this is the perfect time. Oh, he's probably afraid of a thir uh, an extra land. He doesn't want, he wants to make sure a messenger doesn't hit the table. And that's reasonable. Yeah, it's a very, sa it's a very safe play. But at this point, at four, when you know your opponent has that Blood Artist in hand, it's pretty rough because, I mean, you can... The Artist Chain almost kills you by itself at this point. Yes. Uh, you have about two turns to kill your opponent or deal with the Birthing Pod. That's that's all you can do. Or find a Grafdigger's Cage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, against a Grafdigger's Cage, I once even started activating my pod because of the Blood Artist in play. My opponent was really low, but he had a cage, so I just kept killing my own guys. <laughs> Yeah, Aaron has a ton to think about right now, but I can't think of anything in his deck. Sleep is not going to get him out of this one. Unless maybe he actually puts John to sleep instead of his creatures. 
Yeah, it's, I mean, at this point, John doesn't even need to attack ever again to win. No. It's just... He might not. <laughs> Alright, so he's just going to keep all the creatures off the board, force Panic to use all of his mana next turn. John with that tragic slip in his graveyard, the uh, Phantasmal Image Cop being Snapcaster Mage is a very real play. Yes. But uh, this turn... If, if you, had, it, you would need a, a, a blue source. John is just such a strong player, though. Like, I, I've, I've known of him for so many years, but until this last Pro Tour where I tested with him, I didn't know how... How smart this kid was. So good at magic. You know, for, for many years, whenever I've asked people questions about formats, one of the things I've commonly heard from people is, well, Panic told me. What did he say? That's what they would say, is Panic oh, yeah. told me. And then, <laughs> you know, it's... Yeah, quietly one of the best MTGers. Uh, just hasn't had that breakout at the Pro Tour yet. I mean, he's so focused in school, too. Like, he is going places in this world. All right, so we have a Vapor Snag and a uh, Restoration Angel for Aaron, and I don't really see how he's going to get out of this. And with another land, I mean, again, he can bounce two creatures this turn. Uh, yes. Yeah, he can just put both creatures back in, into his hand. But then he's got to be tapped out, and then John can just play the artist, sacrifice, and get a messenger, and Aaron will be at one. Yeah. And John will have a pot and a messenger in play. If he draws a land, then he can copy the messenger too. All right, so Snapcaster comes in. And it looks like that's what we're going to see. Yep. All right, so Snag is going to bounce this Blood Artist back to John's hand. And he's just going to play another land and have Vapor Snag up. Seems reasonable. All right, so I think uh, John's probably just doing any math to see if he can just kill his opponent this turn, which it's pretty tough to do that. But yeah, he would need another land. Yeah. So we're going to play that artist once again. <laughs> John just is like, you're dead. Can we go to game two? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All right. There comes Restoration Angel. Some odd timing on that angel. Yeah. I think Aaron thinks that John is, wants to pod from one to two, but I don't think we're potting from one to two. <laughs> I, I also do not think that we're potting from one to two. Also, I mean, I mean that play then, you know, he doesn't know that John has another one drop in hand. Now John can just, mm -hmm. you know, cast the one drop after activating the pod. Yep. So. The Vapor right. Snag kind of just let John draw a card and lose a life because he would have been able to just eat the zombie with the rest of Angel. Yep, and so uh, Blood Artist uh, gets sacrificed, shooting Aaron for one life. John gains one, well, and loses one. Pretty much afterwards, he loses one, and then uh, the Messenger drops Aaron to one. So uh, no more Phyrexian mana, can't snag your own things, not Sand Black, so it doesn't have Unsummon. Just everything. A lot of people have on some of these days. Do they? Yeah. Usually like one or two in the board. Oh, sure. All right, so what could Aaron draw to win this game? Running uh, Temporal Masteries? Hmm. Not a Mana Leak? Mana Leak's not going to do it? Yeah, I don't really know what you would draw <laughs> at this point. Yeah. All right, yeah. so we're going to game two. John Pennick wins uh, with my new love, Zombie Pod. 
Uh, but let's see I what... I also love this deck. Yeah, it's I mean. so amazing. You're the one that got me onto it. Uh, so let's look at Aaron Cyber because that is the, the first, the most important part about how game two is going to go. Uh, I see that we have a Divine Offer and a Revoke that could potentially come in. Obviously, the, the oh, is it now one or two? I think it's two Celestial Purges. Yeah, I believe this is two Celestial Purges here, so one, two, those are going to be pretty good. Um, how, do you, how do you feel about Tamio in this matchup? I don't think Tamio is actually that bad against pod decks. Uh, hopefully he does bring it in. It's way better than Gideon because you get to lock down one of their permanents, and if it's a birthing pod, you don't have to have removal for it. You can just... That, that's your answer. So I, I really like him bringing in two Tamios, uh, two Celestial Purges, uh, probably one Divine Offering. Images, I think you bring in here. Images aren't that great, right? Like you're copying very aggressive creatures, so like you only can copy your own stuff. Uh, I don't know. I think I think just copying Snapcaster Mages is really strong in this matchup. I think copying Messengers is pretty good. Uh, a lot of the time just being able to copy a blood artist prevents you from just dying to that inevitability so yeah. that they have like creating that parity is mm -hmm. really good um well what do you take out i think you the the three mana leaks obviously come out the mental misstep comes out the mental misstep is bad here yeah it, it can stop a tragic slip but it's still not that good i think the gideons will get swapped with the tamios you don't want to take any of your creature base out which because it's actually pretty good against the aggressive draws and uh, you want to rely on your Oblivion Rings. I guess I would bring in the Revoke and the Divine because you have four Blade Splicers. Uh, combat becomes really difficult, so if you just deal with the the Birthing Pods, it'll actually be hard for Panic to, to break through. Um, on the Zombie Pod side, we have some sweet ones. Uh, so there's three Duress to stop some spells. Um, but the, the problem is, is I think John still thinks he might be against uh, uh, Delver Variant. Like, he knows yeah, it's a Delver I mean, Variant. Yeah, you saw the he, Oblivion Ring. Oh, you did see an Oblivion Ring, so that does say that it's a control. It's like a mid-range deck. Yeah, I mean, the, the Oblivion Ring is kind of the giveaway. That's the giveaway, yeah. So we have uh, Nihil Spellbomb Trinket Mage that I don't think he'll bring in. Yes, I said Trinket Mage. <laughs> um, hey, I think Trinket Mage is a nice it's, one. It's amazing. Yeah. That, that again, that was some uh, JVL tech. Yeah, I came up with that one. It, he's, secret, he's secretly like my ghost deck builder. Like, yeah. whenever <laughs> I have a sweet deck, I just call JVL. I'm like, yo, you, you've been playing Magic? Yeah. All right, I got some questions for you. <laughs> uh, the sweet, the sweet card for the the pod chain is Entomber Exarch. So what this guy does is he can return a creature from your graveyard, or take a non-creature from your opponent's hand. And because you have Phantasm Image and Birthing Pod, you can just make like four Entomber Exarchs. Uh, you can untap and make like three more, and just take every card out of their hand, leave them with no options. You have a bunch of Grizzly Bears. Yeah, I mean it. It's a really strong line. I yeah. think it's it's kind of like the Mind Slicer of this deck, mm -hmm. in yeah, a way. Yeah, exactly. Man, if Mind Slicer was legal. If Mind Slicer Whew. was legal, Mind Slicer would be a real nice one of these zombie pod yeah. decks. Uh, but yeah, so Tumor Exar comes in, the Duresses come in, and that's about it. Uh, a lot of the removal comes out. I guess you bring in the second Metamorph, too. It's good to make multiple bir birthing pods. Like, you never just want to sit on one, because if they find the out, then you just, like, get stopped again. But it only takes about two activations from that card to actually win the game. So it's not too bad, but... Uh, I mean, this isn't the matchup that John wants to be up against, by the way. No. This is no. this is not where John wants to be. I mean, the Zombie Pod deck is, in my opinion, probably the best position deck in yeah. this format. And I do not think Blue White Midrange is positioned well at all. No. But Blue White Midrange is for sure strong against Zombie Pod because, I mean, it has the tools it needs to deal with the Birthing Pod. And then cards like Blade Splicer and Resto Angel and Sphinx, those trump the like the base creature, like the the creature base that the zombie pod deck is playing without the uh, I agree with pod. you on that if Aaron can control the birthing pods. If you can't control birthing pod, that's not where you want to be. Like, your cards aren't fast enough to kill the zombie pod, and they just gain too much life. Yeah. Um, and, but the cards that you take out is a little bit of removal, and hopefully John knew to take a couple of the blood artists out. You really don't want those that often, especially when your opponent has... Um, two drops like Snapcaster Mage that might be sitting in play that you use your images to chain up to your, your three drops. I find Blood Artist one of the weakest cards against blue eyed decks. I mean, I think you side out Blood Artist against Delver, you side out Blue Eye Blood Artist against. That's about yeah, it. Against Control. Against Snapcaster decks. Yeah, or, or just these like Trading Post Control decks. Like Terminus things, like. It's just like a board, it doesn't put any pressure on them. Then you always have to overextend with like a card that does nothing except work with your pods. 
seems to make sense. I mean, in many ways, it's worth keeping one in almost all the time. Oh, yeah, you want the chain. Yeah. Yeah, and there's no, like, good two drops. Like, I just wanted one good two drop to, like, chain with, but there just isn't one. Like... It's yeah, so I mean, you, that's why I suggested Perilous Mirror, and it's, it's yeah. just not good enough. Yeah. But, or Butcher Ghoul. <laughs> yeah, you see a lot of people playing, like, one Butcher Ghoul. Yeah, sometimes you just need it. <laughs> all right. So we're on our way. Everyone keeps all their hands, and Panic does not have... <gasps> he doesn't have a zombie. Oh, no. The one thing I like about Aaron is that he waits on his, like... Oh, okay, it was a glacial. Never mind. <laughs> he waited on his thunder. <laughs> I like that. All right, so we have we have one part of our anti-zombie combo, which is the Celestial Purge. Yeah, the now, problem is that he has two more lands there, and he yeah. already has a pretty land-heavy hand, so if he keeps all three of these cards, like, he you, might be putting himself in a rough position. You can never... You ha always need a Celestial Purge. Always. Oh, and yeah, never mind. His hand has Gideon and whatnot in it. He's, yeah. He wants those lands. That's fine. Uh, all right, so... And Sphinx. So the top of his deck is going to be able to get him to five by itself. Oh yeah, that's that's not a bad curve. All right, so there is a blood artist. So uh, blood artist stayed in, and uh, the best blood artist ever because you're. I mean, it, it sucks that John had a blood artist because he would have just like made those gunshots really bad all game. But uh, all right, so there's the celestial purge that will do so much work in this game. Yeah, we can expect great things from Celestial Perch as this game progresses. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. So we draw another land. We have a Duress. We have an image. Fume Spitter. Metamorph. Multiple is, images. Uh, it's very, very reactive. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's not where you want to be mm -mm. right here. I mean, you'll become really good if Aaron ever gets that Sphinx on the table. <laughs> I don't, I, oh, I, I always am so scared to be in the middle of a Consecrated Sphinx battle when I'm not the Sphinx deck. I don't know, I think the Zombie Pod deck, the, the curve is so much lower that you can actually, like, use all of the cards instead of getting choked up. And, like, you can actually kill the Sphinx because mm -hmm. you're going to be drawing so many cards and, like, you can draw into, into like, slips and things like that, so. I love the patience that John has. Is like, my hand's very reactive, I don't want to use this duress yet. He's blue-white, maybe control, so I want to make sure I like get all the turns away from that ponder, as well as uh, probably cast it right before my opponent plays a Planeswalker. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's going to play it this turn, the duress. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, he he probably knows Aaron. They're wearing the same shirt. So Ooh. I wouldn't be surprised here if he, uh, if he knows that Aaron's on some sort of like, yeah. blue-white mid-range deck before the match even starts. All right. That is a pretty controlling grip. That is that is the hand that John wanted to do something against, not just sit here. You know what's the sweetest thing about clones and Undyne? Is the random times you get to legend out a Gideon. <laughs> I got to do that once, and it, fe it felt so good. All right, so we're going to double duress and get rid of that Gideon. And leave Aaron with a Consecrated Sphinx and a Vapor Snag. And the funny thing is, is that could easily do it. Could easily be enough to win this game. I mean, Aaron doesn't have much left, but uh, the top of his deck is very live now that he has these five lands in play. Yes. I mean, and there are a lot of haymakers that he could peel off the top. John's hand is very clumped. That is a haymaker. <laughs> yeah, that land is, is a haymaker. And you know what else I love about this match? Everyone's playing with Unhinged Lens, and that's all I play with, too. This is so good. I'm very happy right now. All right. Man, so that's we, not what John wanted. Yeah, we don't want more. Cool. We wanted another blue source so we can either double image or metamorph. Like, we don't want to just get bounced. Go, I hope you didn't draw that land. Ooh, there's another Gideon. Ooh. 
this is this is looking really bad for John at this point. All right, so Aaron's going to play a land, throw that Consecrated Sphinx into play, and go wee. Hope for the best. <laughs> that is the best. There's no more hoping. You just have the best in play. Yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> I don't think there's anything sweeter you can do than draw two cards to your opponent's one. I mean, he could conceivably be worried about, you know, the Fume Spitter Tragic Slip possibility. Yeah, I mean, right now you do you have the option. You can't really play around it. You have the option to just kill the ghoul, so it's fine. But yeah, there comes Consecrated Sphinx. Panic just. Pretty sure that's the right play. <laughs> Right. He did not miss the trigger. Found another Vapor Snake, so now Penic will never ever get a... Sphinx was on, yeah. yeah. Alright, losing two life, playing a Metamorph. I feel like John may have missed uh, three points of damage there. I mean, if you attack into that Concentrated Sphinx, I, I don't think you're going to get a block. Yeah, you are, because you could just sack the Fume Spitter and Treasure Slip. Uh, I guess you're right, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, if, if there was two, like, Diagraph Ghouls, sure. Yeah, he clearly would have had it if he had it. Yeah. Oh, what just happened? Oh, there, he, he's allowing it to happen. He didn't un untap upkeep. Oof. That's, that, that could be bad for Aaron. That could be really bad for Aaron. Just like that, John may be back in this game. Yeah. Yeah, he did not do it on during his upkeep. He's going to draw two, and he still has one trigger left. Ooh, Aaron's going to draw more? No, Aaron. Bad Aaron. Pennick found his tragic slip, so then now John's thinking if he wants to go deeper again. Yeah, John found his tragic slip, doesn't want to give Aaron many out so yeah that 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 that's scary like allowing John to draw some extra cards and how many extra cards did John draw just two and just two Aaron drew two not keep going up and Aaron only drew two too yeah he found his tragic slip he he doesn't want Aaron to draw a bunch of cards right like he wants like the more cards that Aaron gets to draw the the lower the variance of the game and Aaron and John really just wants Aaron to win so he probably just found a slip, and that's all he wanted. Now, he might draw more cards during his turn and not give Aaron more things to do with his. This taxing probe going to give John uh, some extra opportunities to draw. I'm not sure if he's uh, going to take that extra opportunity. I mean, if he didn't want to draw those two extra cards last time and he won't want to do it this time either. Yeah. Alright. John doesn't even stop to think about it, you know. I mean if he chose a line he's gonna follow through with it. Yes. And I like that. Yeah, I, I it's confidence. Like you just can't give a person that much land and that many cards. It's just it's not how magic works. <laughs> Gonna play a blade splicer. It's pretty good. I'm curious why you won't vapor snake the Sphinx. Seems like such a easy play to make. Maybe he's waiting till John kills his own Sphinx. Yeah, but he has two of them. He has two vapor snakes. Oh, he does. Yeah. That's just very strange to me why he wouldn't. I mean, now, I mean, Fennec's going to, to run that out there. He'll have a Sphinx. He doesn't want Aaron to have one. But because he only has two Vapor Snakes, uh, John can kill the Consecrated Sphinx. Aaron might protect it, and then he'll play another one. And then he'll always have two Sphinxes in play. All right, so, yeah, he's going to do that, kill off the Blade Splicer, and get rid of the Consecrated Sphinx. 
Yeah, and then the, uh, the Tragic Slip will be able to kill this Consecrated Sphinx before Aaron has to draw any extra cards during John's upkeep. And Aaron decides to Vapor Snag his own Sphinx. Yeah, which John is fine with. He's going to um, get in there for four. Or he's going to draw his card, get in there for four. And Woodland Cemetery. And probably make another Consecrated Sphinx. Yeah, I mean, I can't think of anything else I'd rather do here. So. All right, now that it is attacking. <laughs> So, Vapor Snag takes it away, and that's a little frustrating because having two swings would be sweet. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, at this point, it's. I think it's you again, just not you play the the greatest. messenger. Uh, next turn, you can make two consecrated swingses and do it again. We well, can't make two. He doesn't have enough he has, resources. No, but he can, well, he has he has a oh, cavern soul. He has a fifth land. Yeah. And okay. a, yeah, he has a fifth land and it's a cavern soul. So you can make two meta. Two Phantasm Images if you wanted to, or you can make a Metamorph Image. Alright, untapping that Ponder slowly getting closer to combat. Alright, and the third Vapor Snag. Alright, so many options. Like, you can play the Gideon, you know that John has more clones, uh, but you have Snapcaster Vapor Snag. Right. Aaron's gonna stay on the aggressive. And get in there. Maybe it's just time to put Gideon in play and say, you know, we'll play this like, we'll build the boards up. Because you have Snag and you have Snapcaster Mage. He did not. What? I am confused. What? Uh, I know what, I know what happened. Did you trust Snapcaster? We're, not, we're still sleeping. This is all a dream. I mean, John <laughs> Penn explained my deck. Like, I must, I must still be asleep. You should pinch me. Nope, it's real. <laughs> all right, so now we're just going to make as many Dross Messengers as possible. We can make a few. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I like this that much. I'd much rather attack. Like, show the... Yeah, here's the purge, like... Alright, so that goes away. I uh, wonder what he's going to want to make. Probably just a golem. Like, when the board's filled with bears and 3-3s, three -three, might as well make a golem. Um, I think he might just want to copy Snapcaster Mage and then Duress. Oh, yeah, you can Duress again. Yeah, and then, and then I mean... That is way better, yeah. Yeah. Copy the Snapcaster Mage. I mean, you need you need that Tragic Slip because you want to be able to copy the Snapcaster Mage so you can Tragic Slip away the uh, the Sphinx. Mm -hmm. That's a really important line to have in, in your yeah. bag of tricks. In this game, the the Snapcaster Mage played by Aaron actually really helped John in that regard. Yep. Yeah. But. Uh, I mean, it, it makes John have to decide whether or not he wants to attack, and I think he almost always wants to attack, so. Yes. Not going to be that big of a deal. Snapcaster is going to get to trade here. All go right, yeah. Get rid of that Gideon, Gideon. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very high impact. Can just end the game with a couple swings? Yeah. Like, John has to play offense and defense. have all the angles this game. Yeah. You definitely want to get, you'd love to trade a, I, don't know, I wonder why you didn't want to trade gold for Snapcaster. Well, that's the thing is he wants to keep the Snapcaster in play so that well, he, he can has have his the, own. Oh, but he wants to keep Aaron's in play too? He just wants to have two copies. Yeah, because if he doesn't, then he can get Vapor Snagged yeah. and then Sphinx, and then he's mm -hmm. just cold for the Sphinx. That's true. So. All right, so Aaron drew a land. Uh, it's just time to put that Sphinx back into play. I know yeah, it's I mean, scary drawing a bunch of cards, but... 
and John has a few different lines here. I think uh, taking it is the best line. Like you want to just line. take this damage, so you you can untap, throw both your guys into the red zone, make a copy of Sphinx, make a copy of Snapcaster, kill off. All right, untap draws. Draws a ponder and a island. So nothing that interacts with the board this turn. You know, Penic. Um, kind of getting back into this game. I mean, this this game looked like it was all but over, and one turn Aaron decided that he wanted to make that Snapcaster line instead of uh, yeah. just following through with the Sphinx, and yeah, he, he, he you know, gave John a little bit of an opening to see if he could make something happen. Yeah. It's looking like that's what's going on here. Yeah, Aaron's decision trees are a little bit schizophrenic. All right, so Aaron's going to take it. Now, Now, aren't you under the pressure of just making as much draft messengers and ignoring the board? Like, you get to play two messengers this turn? I think that's probably the right play. I mean, at this yeah. point, it just it just doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. The, like, Aaron can't kill you next turn unless he has. No, he just needs a vapor snag. Is that all? So he's got seven, eight, nine. Yeah, all eight, and he has the vapor snag, I assume. Yeah. So. Yeah, I guess you can't do that. This is this is tight. I think he has. So I think we're gonna image on the tragic slip to snag or to kill off like the messenger. And probably he's just going to make a So this uh this image is uh Yeah, the line that I would take is copy Snapcaster Mage, kill Snapcaster Mage, make a messenger with your cavern soul, say go. Then like just hope to get from there, because you have a disciple to sack, you have like some clones. Gonna duress. All right, so he chooses to duress. In response, I think he's going to what? Oh wow! I think John just won. He was afraid. He was afraid of a removal spell. But I mean, now he's just dead. Yeah. He's dead to the, like the passive ability of John's back to just drain. Yep. This is a crazy game. This is a crazy game. All right. All right. Cavernous Souls on zombie. Drops messenger comes down. And that ponder better be good. <laughs> looking like it, it's crazy like uh, Aaron has taken some uh, pretty drastic pretty crazy lines uh, in this game where he's drawn a bunch of cards of Conscript Sphinx <laughs> so, so let's go digging yeah. let's see what he finds here a blade splicer, that's gonna get shuffled away. Yeah, it's just not good enough at this point. And he's uh, one mana short of uh, splicering and sphinxing on the same mm -hmm. turn. And you also, I mean, you're actually going to need some running action this this game. I, I guess the sphinx kind of gives you all the action if, you ever if need. If Aaron but. doesn't find something to interact, John does just have lethal. He has uh, an image and a disciple, or? He has a disciple and a metamorph. So he needs another land. He does need another land, but it, you get three draw steps to find it, so you just like, uh, yeah, how do you actually, no, that is true, you actually have, it's difficult to actually get there. Well, no, he just attacks with his team and the game's over. Because he's going to take two, and then, uh, no matter what, and then the messenger's going to die. 
and then you just play another messenger. And that's just game over. So if Aaron did not draw off of that ponder shuffle, the game is done. It's just over. He only needs to play one of those spells. Ooh. All right, the game continues. This game is crazy, man. It's crazy, man. It's getting ridiculous. All right, so Consecrate Sinks at three lands. Um, next turn, John can Metamorph, Tragic Slip, the Snapcaster, get in for four. I think he drew another second to say, well, that's a little awkward. He doesn't want that right now. No. I like copying Snapcaster Mage, Tragic Slipping, and putting your opponent at one life. I also like doing that. <laughs> I think Pennick likes doing that too. Copy Snapcaster Mage. Snapcaster down. Uh, two Snapcasters and a Diagraph Ghoul get into the red zone. Eric takes his 3-3 Golem, decides what to block. I guess when your your opponent's team is all images, you might as well just block the Ghoul. In case, like, you never know what happens, yeah. Blocks the Diagraph Ghoul. Goes to one life against a deck with Blood Artist and Diagraph Ghoul in it. Yeah, the... Uh... One life is just you know, not a good place to be in standard. <laughs> like, no, not at all. Paper snake, cut shot. Cut shot against everybody. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like everybody has eight cards that just get you. All right, we have a purge, though. It's a good one. Yeah, but now there's no but there, it's all black blue guys creature. Yeah, so, on John's side so of the board, think, yeah. It John's seemed mono correct. black deck is it seemed it's to all kill, blue guys yeah. right now. It seemed correct to kill that one, but now it's not. So now he, if he whips on his... his three Snapcaster mages... Every line has just been like one, just one slightly wrong move. Like everything Aaron's done to get to the spot. <laughs> I even like blocking the dagger up cool, and then I was like, oh yeah, that isn't right. Oh, we found a Snapcaster Mage. Now the board's just gonna get decimated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Aaron wins anyway. From yeah. that Snapcaster Mage <laughs> after all this. <laughs> Unless he vapor stacks his own sphinx again for some reason, yeah. then he does not win. <laughs> All right, vapor snag. Yeah, kill off an image. All right, blocks happen. Team's dead. <laughs> Reassemble the team. Uh, let's draw some cards. Let's try to find a draw messenger. And he's then on board. The, oh, no, he's not then on board because he's got... No, because he can chump block. And he gains two from the yep. Disciple. Yeah, so, looking for that blood uh, artist or messenger. Well, we found a birthing pod. I don't know what that's going to do, but if... Still oh have no! A worm in his deck because that would be good enough, right? I uh, know no, he can only go to five. If okay. what, what what happens here? We block, we play that, we sack that. Um. No, we do have enough. So if this, uh, if he doesn't attack with everything and um, nothing, oh, there's another purge. When did he draw another purge? I thought he only had two purges. Did you already play both purges? I thought he did. One got dressed. He one got dressed one. and he played another. He should not have another purge in hand. Is it a divine offering? No, I think it's a celestial purge. Can we get a confirmation on this? He shouldn't have purge in hand. Oh, it might be a revoke existence. It could be. No, he has a celestial purge in hand. But he cast celestial purge last turn from his hand, correct? Yes. It's a what? He shouldn't have a purge. He used both of his purges in this game. Hey, Magic players. 
Oh no, he snapcasted it, didn't he? Uh, he did snapcast to the purge, but didn't he cast another purge then last turn? Can we get confirmation from someone online? I thought I swear he used both purges. He must not. I'm yeah. I think. Anyone that was following along online, did he ever cast a second purge? Yeah, he got to rest, then he snapcastered it. Okay. To remove Jarl's messenger, and then he... Why did he... Was he dead? Oh, he couldn't yeah. activate Birthing Pod? Because he could have played a... Oh, no he, no, he got it purged. Okay, so we have to go to a quick game three. Wow, this has just been going crazy. That game was unreal. Yeah, that game was unbelievable. Yeah, did he only cast one Celestial Purge uh, um, in that entire match? Except for that last one? He must have. Yeah, I, I I thought it happened two turns in a row. I thought he snapcaster to purge, and then, and, then the, purge? and then he had three snapcasters in play, and the next turn. He oh, he drew away a the... no, he drew the purge, and he just didn't use it. Yeah, oh, that's what happened. Yeah, yeah I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We were talking about how he that. couldn't use the purge. Yeah, oh, because of the three yes. blue guys. All right, right. time for you're more right. caffeine. Let's wake up. <laughs> yeah. It's just odd when you're you're under the gun like that and you have a purge in hand and can't use it against the mono black deck. Mm -hmm. Just both of our brains were just like, I don't understand how that's possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even though we just talked about it. Alright, so hopefully Morning. we get a That was such an interesting game. That is a game that, that I want to go that. back and talk about like There's a couple like crazy crazy lines of errands and uh it just feels like John also could have done something if your opponent's at one life. All right, maybe they, I think they maybe got a little bit of a time extension too, maybe? I don't know, but hopefully they can get this game done. Yeah, I, uh... Taking a round one draw is just had, uh, At least a minute or two while we got them yeah. set up under the camera. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. All right, so hands are drawn, and Aaron's is very slow and very... It's a Consecrated Sphinx, a probe, some type of offering... All right, and uh, John gets started with a grave crawler, the best turn one, and a second card Sanks Saints drawn. Uh, no life will be paid to probe John Pennock, and he shows Ooh, kind of a stinker. Well, John's pl game plan is we want to get this game done. I think this this hand has some aggression. I don't want to mulligan into oblivion. I mean, it's it's definitely a reasonable keep, yeah, especially given the circumstances, but yeah. not where he wants to be. What about drawing another Grave Crawler? That puts, it, <laughs> puts him in a much better spot. Yeah. I love how Grave Crawler... It makes crawler, a big difference. Yeah, uh, and with that Blood Artist, having double Grave Crawlers, pretty huge. Oh, yeah. Do you have a Blades Buster? I'll run into that. There's a time in the round. Oh, Act so that's time to have extra five minutes. Finish your turn. You have five extra turn. If your match is over, please break your resume to sleep at the main stage. Once again, it's no time in the round. No Slush Purge. That makes John very happy. I, and I love, I love John's patience on his dresses. Like, he doesn't Definitely. need that information yet. He knows it's not valuable. Oh, he's going to cast anyway. <laughs> well, I mean, at this point, like, he doesn't know what he's going to draw off the top of his deck. Um, only target is Divine Offering here, so he's looking at a hand. Aaron only has a Snapcaster Mage, which can target an irrelevant Divine Offering, and a couple of Sphinxes, so there's no Blade Splicer in there, huh? I thought there was. Yeah, no, he doesn't have a Blade Splicer, no. He just has a Snapcaster Mage, and so now he's just going to run one out, probably, and uh, get that probe out of the... Oh. Hang like this probe. This is real scary. I mean, he wants to get this Blade Splicer on this yeah. turn, but he can't. So he's going to Snapcaster and flashback one of those probes right now. Yep. He really doesn't have any other choice. That she's not to. Aaron down to eight here. John. John has an answer for the first Sphinx. Has a Blood Artist in play. Has a bunch of creatures that don't care if they die. Wretch about a turn too late. Yeah. One turn behind here. And Aaron's going to uh, cast that anyway. Needs to. Yeah, Ratchbomb comes down. 
something. I, I mean, the Snapcaster Mage can't even really block. It's just a terrible block if it does. Yeah, it's the same I mean, thing as the... It, it just costs John one mana, and he gains him two life. Yeah. <laughs> and at this point, he knows that from the probes that John's yeah. hand is not an action-packed sequel, you know? <laughs> <laughs> He's, uh... All right, untaps, draws Restoration Angel. That's a good one. It's fine. Not good enough. Yeah, at this point, it's so hard. Like, you're at two life. If John ever draws another zombie, he gets the team back. You, you, you really need to find a purge to get rid of the Blood Artists and then get rid of both the zombies. But. Well, I think Aaron's just dead on board because there's a Fume Spitter in John's hands. So next turn, John... You can just kill both of those creatures, yeah. And then just Fume Spitters his own Blood Artists and yeah. Aaron dies. So, yeah, both great colors sent into the red zone. And because of the go for the throat... Uh, if the Fusider ever resolves, there's two damage right there. Yeah. That's still not what you want to do. I guess it's fine. I mean, but... now John just wins on board, right? Yeah. Go on the throat, kill the Restoration Angel, game's over. Well, I mean, Aaron could have popped the bomb there, right? He could have popped the bomb and Gone went to, to one, one and hoped that John didn't have a Fusider, but I think he just... Yeah, I mean... 